What's up guys and girls, John Rettinger here. I want to give you a head-to-head -head comparison of the iPhone 3GS versus the iPhone 3G. Both are running the most updated versions of OS 3.0. I'm going to show you calendar speed, SMS speed, stock speed, screen rotation, browser speed on both 3G and Wi-Fi. I'm going to show you what you get with the 3GS that you don't get with the 3G so you can decide which device is right for you or if it's worthwhile to upgrade. So an application that I use quite a bit is Stock. So let me go ahead and open up both of these Stock applications and we'll see the speed in which both of them load. So I'll put Stocks right there and right there, hit them at the same time. iPhone 3GS loaded much quicker and these are both over the exact same Wi-Fi network. And you can see that the 3GS pulled it up much, 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 much quicker and they're still both receiving the data. Take them a little bit a long time to receive the data, but this is the first time the 3GS and the 3G have actually used this. So we will go to the next application. You saw the 3GS certainly won there. Let's go ahead and look at Calendar, another application that I use quite a bit. So I'll open up both at the same time. Once again, the 3GS was noticeably quicker. Nothing drastic, maybe half a second to a second, but it still was much quicker. So let's try screen rotation next. And let's try screen rotation on, let's go to Notepad for example. So let me go ahead and open up a new note. And let me open up a new note here as well. Okay, so we both have new notes open on each. And let's check out the screen rotation. Zoom out just a bit so you can get the full effect. There we go. And again, 3GS, 3G. Three 3GS was noticeably quicker there. Let's try it going into portrait mode. That was a little bit closer, but the 3GS still won. Let's try it one more time. Once again, the 3GS was still quicker. Okay, so next let's load Google Maps, something that I use quite a bit. Let's see which one is quicker with these two as well. There certainly seems to be a trend that the 3GS is living up to the S in its name. And that loaded much faster. And there goes the 3G. I'm gonna close both of those. Now one of the big things people are wondering about are internet speeds. Now both phones are running on the same AT&T's HSDPA 3G network and both are now currently using the same Wi-Fi network. So let's compare browser speeds using the same Wi-Fi and let's see if the increase in processor speed actually results in real world speed. So I'm going to go ahead and load the exact same website on each. Okay, so both devices have full Wi-Fi strength and I've got a website queued up on each ready to go. So let's go ahead and hit go at exactly the same time or as close as I can get and we'll see which one wins. We are loading up pocketnow.com on each and it appears that the 3GS is noticeably quicker on Wi-Fi. I wonder if that results in just processor speed. And the 3GS is already done both over the same Wi-Fi network while the 3G is still, I wouldn't say struggling to load, but it's definitely a little bit slower to load. And there it goes, just finishes up. So there really was a very noticeable difference. And one thing that I love about the iPhone is the browser. But one thing I also notice is that when I scroll down very quickly, sometimes I get the black and white checker bars right there. It takes longer to scroll down. Let's see if that's the same case on the iPhone 3G. If I can scroll faster, then it can load the page. Nope, I scrolled all the way down, all the way back up, and it stayed right with it. So I think that is a direct result of the increased processor and RAM. So now let's try running the same test both times now over 3G. So I'm going to turn Wi-Fi off on each phone. Okay, so Wi-Fi is turned off on each and we've got full five bars on both phones, the same network strength on each of 3G. We're going to load exactly the same web page so it's got exactly the same files in memory. And let's see if it's any faster over 3G. And you would expect that maybe we'll get the same results even though we're running on the same network, perhaps a faster processor will result in increased load times. Let's go ahead and go at the same time again. And we're off, and we'll see if the S in 3GS lives up to its name. And again, this is 3G speed. 
And we are already seeing a noticeable difference with the 3GS already finishing loading the page and the 3G is still loading. And we're done on the 3GS. The 3G is still loading the page. There comes the sidebar. Still going. So there really is a very, very noticeable difference on 3G. Now let's see if that same scrolling issue occurs. If I can scroll faster than it shows up. You can see it's blue there and the 3GS is loaded at no problem, which was quite interesting actually. So let's try this test, at least over 3G, on one more web page. And we'll load Engadget.com on each. Okay, so one more test over 3G, and certainly your 3G network strength and signal is going to vary from location to location, but you can see in the exact same place on the exact same network what the speed difference is. And maybe that pocket now test we just did was a fluke, so let's try it again on a different website. We'll hit go at the same time. And we're off. And once again, the 3GS is noticeably quicker, pulling up Engadget.com. You can already scroll through and start reading the page on each. This is a pretty graphic intensive, or relatively graphic intensive, a lot of pictures on it. Decent amount of text. It looks like the 3G caught up. That's taken a little bit of a lead, and the 3GS has stalled a little bit. And in that, this test, it looks like the 3G actually won, which is quite interesting. The 3GS is still loading. Looks like it's getting close to finishing up. So that was very interesting. The 3GS took a really early lead and loaded the images much quicker, but the 3G caught up. Definitely something to keep in mind. Although I will say that in my experience, that since I've had the phone for a couple hours now, the 3GS does load pages noticeably quicker, with perhaps a few exceptions, and this is definitely one of them. So in all fairness, I'm glad you guys got a chance to see that. So let me show you some of the things that you get with the 3GS that you don't get with 3G. So I'll go back to the home screen. And the first and one of the most notable things, other than the speed and allegedly increased battery life, is the addition of a magnetic compass. So let me show you guys what that looks like. Where did I put the compass? There we go. Compass. And you can see that as I move around, it tells me what direction I'm facing. And it does have a lot of uses for things like Google Maps, so that is quite nice. The next thing that you're going to get with the 3GS over the 3G is the uh, voice option. So let me show you what that looks like, and I'll do further demos of each of these in subsequent videos. But this is voice commands, so you hold down the home button. And you've got just a ton of voice control. Actually, the controls that you can say are scrolling by. You can say dial, pause music, control audio music right from here. And like I said, I will do more videos demoing voice control. And the next, and perhaps well, most important, I would say is the camera and now camcorder options. So this uses a three megapixel autofocus camera. If I pull this up, let's say I want to take a picture of the 3G right there. If I tap the screen, it'll autofocus right on the screen. If I move a little bit closer and I want to focus on it, tap the screen and it'll autofocus. And pictures do look noticeably better than they do on the 3G. I think Apple really optimized the three megapixel sensor. Put this down here. And you'll notice on the right hand side, I've got a little switch now where I can switch over to camcorder mode. And this morning I put up a sample of what video recording looks like on the iPhone 3GS. You can check that out if you want to see the quality. But here is the interface at the very least. You can turn it from portrait to landscape and it'll auto adjust. And it's relatively simple. You hit the record button and you just record and you hit stop and you're done. And it keeps all of your video, and I'll show you, really archived right as it would with all your pictures, which is quite neat. So here's my camera roll with some pictures. And if I go, let's say, there's a screen cap I did of a game I was playing, and I scroll over, here I am now at the video and you gotta play. And you can go ahead and just hit play. 
And I will say that video quality, and you can check out the sample that I did, is very nice. Certainly rivals, I would say, the Flip Minnow. Not the Flip Minnow HD, but the regular Minnow, as far as quality goes. And audio fidelity was actually really good. So one thing that I've noticed about the 3GS. I will also say, and this may just be me, that the speaker seems a little bit louder on the 3GS as well. Anyway guys, wanted to give you a head-to-head -head comparison of the iPhone 3GS versus the 3G. If you want to upgrade, you are going to get increased speed and really you're going to see it in web time, web load times, and application load times, although there will certainly be exceptions to that, like we saw with Engadget.com. But overall, if you're due for an upgrade, I think the 3GS is a great way to go. Although, if I wasn't up due for an upgrade and I was thinking about it, you know, you might have to think twice about paying the really steep price for the 3GS. Hope you enjoyed. For exclusive content, be sure to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash john 4 lakers You can ask me all kinds of iPhone questions over there. I'll put a link in the sidebar. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.